Hey YouTube, feeling for This is a two part video. The first part, in part one, we're going to show you how we went to my daughter's backyard and we picked grapes, we brought them home, we washed them and crushed them, and then we put them in the primary fermenting buckets and how we did all that, the things that we added to it, the steps we took and then took it all the way through to when we transfer it over to the carboys for the secondary fermentation and what happens when we take that out when we take uh, the juice out of the carboys and that's where the second part part two picks up but you stick around for part two because we're going to show you how to let it age over a few months and how we rack the wine from the old carboy into a new clean sanitized carboy and then after we do that a couple of times with two or three month intervals um, this is a six month process it doesn't have to be that long but I just let it be that long I let the wine rest that long but in the end you stand by you, you stay tuned because Janet and I are gonna have a taste test but before the taste test I'm gonna show you not only how you rack the wine but how you filter the wine and how you bottle the wine and I have a, a mini jet uh, filter press that works real good it gets it crystal clear and then Janet and I are gonna come right back out here on this back porch and show you the end result and have a little taste test in a celebration so you stay tuned for all that it's fun what else have you got to do right all right, see you later, Phil and Florence. While I get the Camden tablets crushed, the calcium carbonate to cut down on the acidity, acidity. Also the bentonite will be going in with two tablespoons of bentonite. All right, I'm gonna get five Camden tablets out of this little bag. Actually six because this is a six and a half gallon carboy Put six in there one per gallon and just take this little ice cream scoop And just roll it around and punch it down Make it powder And I'm gonna Put this in the new carboy and stir it. We'll just put that to the side We're gonna take some calcium carbonate and we need a half teaspoon per gallon so I'm gonna put about three teaspoons in some warm water I suppose this real chalky it's supposed to cut down on the acid since these muscadines are high in acid and we'll pour that in pour through I'm just gonna pour Pour this in, and it pours in pretty good. There we go. That's the best way to do that part. Put the funnel there, and now we'll pour in the bicarbonate, uh, calcium bicarbonate. I will say that you don't have to do a lot, some of these things. You need the Camden tablets or the metabolic sulfite to. Uh, prevent bacteria from getting in the wine but you know that calcium carbonate you don't have to put that in this bentonite you don't have to put that in but this is to make your wine uh, get clear and pretty and taste good we're going in with two teaspoons of bentonite let's see use two teaspoons and one half cup of warm water sufficient for five gallons and you need to be stirring when you put this in. It's just really, it's, it's clay from what I hear, crushed ground clay. It clings to the particles and dead yeast and stuff in the wine and takes it to the bottom. Okay, I just poured in the bentonite. I forgot to put the camera back on it. It's hard to remember, you get involved and you forget to do things but I'm going to stir this with my paddle 
long stirring spoon here just stir all that stuff real good now remember I've already of course crushed the grapes in the primary fermentation process I squeezed out the pulp went through the net and you just put it over into these carboys or a fast fermenter all right then you wait till the secondary fermentation stops so your specific gravity gets down to 1.0 or either 0.997. All the sugars fermented out and turn to alcohol. That'll be a dry wine. If you want to sweeten it, you'll have to back sweeten at the end of the process. And that's when you put in some potassium sorbate. To prevent any sugar you put in for sweetening to start fermenting again and each time you rack you add five or six more crushed Camden tablets which is metabisulfite to keep it clean toward the end after I rack it about three times uh, I'll put in the key to saw and key to sand or whatever the name of those clarifiers are I got some of that and then I'm gonna run it through my filter press that I got to make it sparkling clear and then bottle it but all that'll be several months from now got to keep everything sanitized and clean I'm gonna pour this back into it no need to lose it I'm lacking a little bit to come back up to the top, so what I got to help in that cause, I'm Doug here I'm going to cap it off with, and I actually got two more gallons that I'm going to use. I'll stop it right there. So we're good to go on this one. All I got to do now is stick this uh, airlock back in, put that back down. Push it in, and we're done. We're wrapped. Let that set for several months, or a couple months anyway, and then we'll do it again. And that'll get clearer and clearer each time I do that until I get uh, get it where I want it. Usually it takes two more times, and uh, and then I'll put the clarifier in it and then run it through my filter press and bottle it. Okay, that's the, what, what we got going on so far. Check back with you in about a month or two. Well, it's time for me to do something with all this wine I made back in September and October. Here it is in March of the next year. See how pretty clear that is? I need to rack it again, put in some Camden tablets and uh, some ketosan and ketosol, whatever you call that, clarifying agent. Six and a half gallons. This is potassium metabisulfite. That's uh, one and a half teaspoons. We'll go ahead and fill this up with the wine and then I'll put in my clarifier. I'll come back to you when it's, uh, when it gets about full. Okay, what we're going to do now is use this Kiesel saw. I'm going to put that in first. One right. gives it a positive charge and one gives it a negative charge. Anyway, it attaches to each other, the floating particles, and uh, stir that gently. This isn't rocket science. You just make a little wine, then you drink a little wine, right? Yeah. We're going to get this cheetah sand and the scissors. And carefully make a little place for it to come out. And squeeze the packet. I'm going to stir in that cheetah sand to mix it good. <laughs> with the 
Kiesel saw. This one here. Was the uh, bronze grape. It's a large bronze grape. And when I went to back sweeten it, I put two two can 12 ounce cans of the uh, apple cherry by Wild Orchard or something like that to back sweeten it and put the potassium sulfate in so it wouldn't re-ferment but uh, this one tastes real good too they're about 12 and a half percent so it's a nice nice wine if you like a strong wine it's real good my wife said it's a little strong for her she likes that 10 and 11 percent from the grocery store but we'll see uh, this is going to be interesting after it ages a little bit and sets up i think it's going to be good wine anyway that's uh the next step is bottling i might come back and show you a little bit of that see you later here i am bottling or attempting to bottle some wine got my bottles over there and I got this Bueno Vino Mini Jet working here. You know, it fills that little reservoir up and I'll stop it like every, I don't know, four, three or four minutes. I'll stop it and empty that into this pitcher and I'm just, I'm not going to put it in the, the bottled wine. I'm going to put that in a separate bottle just in case of any contamination. I mean, everything's clean, but, you know, don't want to mess up the, the larger. And it's, it's coming out against the wall of the, got it in a big bubbler, large mouth bubbler with a spout. I'll do the bottling, hook my bottling tube up to that. You could bottle right out of this thing, but I just choose not to do that. Anyway, I got my intake stem down in there. As you can see, it's coming down right there. Got a little sedimentation in there. I had put the uh, clarifier in there over a week ago. So what all is on the bottom came and it was racked four times. So I've, I've done everything I know to do to get it clear. So that's working. It's, you just have to stop every now and then and uh, dump that out and let it go again. So you lay I'm taking these bottles. I got some metal by sulfite that I'm pouring from one to the other. Throwing the clean ones, sanitized ones, sterilized ones over there. And just going from bottle to bottle. That's how you do that. Of course there are devices you can buy to uh, set them on a rack and cut it on and they just spray water and stuff up in the bottle. You know, if you did it all the time, I, I'd get something like that, but just once a year, a few cases of it, I can do it like this. And just do that, and I've already got one box. I'm getting ready to bottle it from up there. I got four of those to do. All right, I'm getting ready to fill this bottle. I'll turn it where you can see the, the level of uh, wine going into it. You just push down on the wine, uh, wine spring loaded in, opens up, and lets it go in. And just let it come right on up to the neck. Let up on it and see if the spring goes back and lets it uh, stop and then you just touch the tip on the on the uh, side and just let it come on up about a half inch or inch into the neck and that's it you got a full bottle and that's how you fill the bottle so now i'm getting ready to put the cork in and i've got a bowl full of corks up here that's been soaking in some water and a little bit of uh bisulfite Keep it clean. It's bottle of water. I'm going to slide the, you know, you can get cheap corkers, corking tools. You can get expensive ones. This is just something that works. It's not a real expensive one. But if I did this all the time, I would get the real Cadillac model, you know, like anything else. 
you center that on there and it's good to do it down on the floor see what I'm doing and just push down till it seats boom that's it you have a nice bottle of and I'm using these old bottles I'm gonna take these labels off you don't need to have the original labels on these and these other bottles are new bottles they don't have any labels but I'm reusing these old bottles and so need to take those labels off and actually it's good to do that before you get to this point put them in hot water and break that glue loose and uh, anyway as you can see this next one you just grab the next one it goes pretty quick once you begin slide that cork down in your hole straddle the the neck I like you don't have to center the cork but I just like that and then go down Boom, just that quick. Makes a nice, pretty cork bottle. And that's a new bottle with no label. Okay, I'm going to get working on the rest of these uh, cork in these bottles, and I'll come back and show them all to you one okay. more time. Bottling this first bunch, and that's 28 750 milliliters and one, one and a half liter. You're supposed to get 30 bottles. I, I got the carboys done the other day. Now I'm working on these fast fermenters. I'm running this wine out. You're supposed to be able to bottle right from a bottle in uh, tube you can screw on the bottom, but I'm not pleased with these fast fermenters on what uh, what I've got in there. It needs filtering, even though I use the clarifier. Uh, a lot of stuff was clinging to the walls, the plastic walls, and I brushed all that loose. I'd already used the clarifier and I didn't see all that stuff on the walls. I knocked all that loose with a rag taped around, a rubber band around the end of my long spoon and knocked it loose to settle in the ball. But I just don't feel good about bottling out of that, so I'm running it through this mini jet. This Wayne Vino mini jet pump, filter pump, does a good job. And I got it going into this big mouth bubbler, and it does have a, a bottle fill spout. So I'm going to bottle out of this, which is just as easy. But I feel a lot better about filtering it. Of course, that's what I bought this filter press for anyway, is to filter my wine. It makes it crystal clear. Well, as you can see, this mini jet's doing a wonderful job. I know some people have talked about having problems leaking and whatever, but I haven't touched it. And if you get it set up right, get these pads set in right, they go in a certain way. Uh, it's not leaking. Usually, I, last time I had a build up in here of a leak and I had to keep stomping and dumping out this tray of the overflow but this time man it's working like a charm haven't touched it since I turned it on very pleased with it today and what little bit of overflow you can see is coming out of this overflow coming out of here the drip it's not a bad drip it's just a slight drip but it see that groove in there it's just following that groove right out of this hose and you need it down low so everything can drain down but uh it's doing good nice got the labels off so i'm gonna make some new labels either prw fills redneck wine or piff wine fill in florence that's my youtube channel <laughs> we'll see all right, this is the second recipe. As you see, there's 31 one and a half liter bottles, 31. The first recipe was uh, 60 uh, 750 milliliter bottles, the smaller bottles. I don't have those, just wait here. You saw those when I was bottling. That noise you hear is our kitchen remodel beginning. They're outside making a new entrance. We'll be tearing a hole in that wall over there. <laughs> They'll be coming through. Anyway, this is the yield of our 
why I'm making half of it. We look forward to enjoying this and giving some to friends. Hope you enjoyed it. Hey guys, this is the end of the road for the wine uh, making and for the wine tour. So we've got a bottle of the wine that I made. So what we're gonna do is have a little toast. Gonna have a toast. And I got a special toast. You'll find out in just a second. All right. Woo. Must be good. I heard it pop. Let me hold your glass over here, honey. And of course, this is muscadine wine. Anybody can make from your grapevine in the backyard. These, these are not special grapes ordered from Italy or Napa Valley. These are just grapes that we grow. Muscadine wine, muscadine grapes. And there are two varieties. One is a large purple. I can't tell you the name of it. I've looked them up before, but you know, their name's about that long. And a large, large bronze grape but they're both sweet, they both are delicious. But this is the best I've made yet, I will say. So let's toast to something real special going on right now, and that is the remodeling of our kitchen. And so they're back there bamming and uh, knocking a hole in the wall and making a new hallway and steps for a new entrance because we're going to close in where the door is now and so we got a new kitchen and next time you see Phil and Florence maybe uh, in a couple months you'll see all the new stuff <laughs> so this is a cheers to this 2017 and 18 wine but a special cheers for our new kitchen cheers honey cheers Pray for us. <laughs> that we stick this. together. <laughs> this is next to building a house. So. Yes. All right. Let's see how this is. Oh, very good. good. Very good. Yeah. I might have a giveaway and send a lucky person some of my homemade wine. One more time. I bet I could think of about 25 more things to cheers to <laughs> after I cut the camera off. Anyway, thank you for coming along on this video. This was a little different for Phil and Florence. This was uh, taking you through the process of homemade wine. It's not perfect. It's not professionally done. This is just me showing you what I did. If you really want to see a professional, go over to Larry's Beer and Barbecue. Um, he really is a lot more skilled at this than I am, and I hope I got the Larry's in the right place, but uh, what a terrific guy, and he's a good barbecuer, and he's a good winemaker. Until next time, and until next year for the wine, <laughs> this is Phil and Florence. Jen and Florence. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.